unfortunately, on my side of the end, I wasn't able to perform when it most mattered. Man, I can't believe how long ago this was. 2015 is basically the middle ages of esports. I'm really sorry to all my fans that I let you down. I mean, Dyrus had such a long career. He achieved so many things, but you can't be on top forever. Everything that's there, it's, it's been done. And now it's time to open a new book. Right now, my story ends here. I mean, he's gotten kind of old. How can you expect a dinosaur like Dyrus to keep up with all these new kids in the top lane? Wait, he was 23? We've all said it or seen it online. A pro player being labeled washed up. It's actually an expression that goes back to the 1920s, used to describe an individual who literally washed their hands after completing a job. But in time, it became a way of criticizing perceived has-beens in show business, sports, and later, esports. Okay, so it depends on the game, but conventional esports wisdom is that most players peak in their early 20s. And once they hit 30, they stop being able to play at the highest level altogether. In some games, players are even retiring before the age of 25. I've been playing the league for a really long time. Uh, I'm getting tired. I'm not playing as well as I used to be used to play. I'm gonna be announcing my retirement. I'm not gonna be playing in season three, and uh, we're gonna be picking up a new AP carry, and that will be announced um, pretty shortly. Now this is a sharp contrast to traditional sports, where players can reach their peak anywhere from their mid-20s to early 30s. And in some sports, they can stay competitive into their 40s. Take Vince Carter. He's 42. And in January 2020, he's gonna play against the Raptors, who will be wearing a throwback jersey that Carter himself wore in 1999. Trigger at loose. Vince Carter! Like, he's so old that if you foul him, you're gonna get grounded. Car privileges revoked. Giles against the veteran Vince Carter. Vince trying to talk to uh, talk Giles and say, "Hey, settle down here, young, youngster." I'm in a post and I said, "Man, you failed me down there." He's like, "You hooked me down." I'm like, "You taught me to move, so you can't get mad at me, you know." <laughs> you respect the rules of our house. You're grounded. While repetitive strain and back injuries are a factor in most esports, professional athletes certainly experience more physical strain over the course of their careers. So what's happening here? Why are players retiring earlier than their athletic counterparts, even though injuries are less of a factor? I think the biggest challenge facing esport as it grows right now is athlete well-being. Because we have this situation where athletes right now are going from just playing, 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 playing individually, and then they join a team. Then you have a player who is not prepared for the stresses of a, an elite athletic career and they can't really look out for themselves because often they're 18, 19 year old guys and girls who are just jumping straight from their living room into a stadium. In esports, there's a ton of pressure to keep up and that often means long hours of practice. Each has a legion of female fans whom they will never have time to date because the team practices until 3 a.m., 10 hours a day, seven days a week. I'm supposed to be the franchise player and we're in here talking about practice. Elite athletes in traditional sports practice a lot too, of course, but there's a physical limit on the hours you can put in. Your body can only take so much. In esports, it's all about what your mind can handle. And people have tried to push that limit, practicing double digit hours a day between team scrims and ranked modes. There's stereotypes that go along with the sport of, I grind, I play hour upon hour upon hour upon hour, I put in 12 hour days, and so there's this badge of honor in esports that if I grind more, I'm going to get better. I was 10 hours straight, he's a machine. I know League of Legends. And here's the first problem. Even with the very best in ergonomics, support staff, and wrist exercises, human beings just aren't meant to sit in front of a screen for 16 hours a day. Indy has earned a reputation for working long hours, and at 18 years old, he's starting to get injuries more common to people at least twice his age. It's not healthy, but how many organizations are gonna tell their star player to stop before they burn out? And though these things are changing, a lot of these players still don't practice in ideal environments. Dimitri, I just got picked up by Elite Esports to play Melty Blood. Elite Esports. Yeah, sounds very reputable. Well, come on, they've got a training facility and everything. I'll, I'll send you pictures. 
Hope you enjoy labbing behind a dumpster. Oh, come on. But we understand why they do it. It's because there's a sea of young players who want to push their way into the highest tier of competition and take their spot. Being on Curse, like getting into professional gaming, my schedule was basically go to school, practice till like midnight, sometimes one, and then Friday night I would drive up, live in the Curse house, play LCS, come home Sunday night and do the same thing pretty much. The physical and mental toll of intense practice schedules isn't the only thing the players have to deal with. They also have to contend with the fact that fans are constantly bickering about whether the players are, well, washed. Reminder that Smithy got replaced on his role by Zuna because of how bad at jungling he was. The skadoodle looks dead inside. True statement, very dead. Nothing going on in here. Uh, did you guys ditch Reckless and get a real ADC? Jesus. Trash. <laughs> like, <laughs> you. Perhaps nowhere else are the fickle opinions of fans illustrated better than with Alu. When he plays well, he's God Alu. And looking for the triple out of the last man standing with 20 seconds left. He has to crunch this. They need this round. NIP, they are getting destroyed on this map. And Alu picks up a kill now. Just has to get down this bomb. But Edward Sneaky shot goes and Alu clutches it. But when he messes up, he's bought Alu. It's gonna be a stick, but, uh, or that, not, it's not a stick, but it, look at this. It's a headshot, it's a Glock, and it's on first! Oh. oh, he's bamboozled himself. Zeus is another player who's attracted the ire of certain commenters. But with his victory at PGL Major Krakow 2017, he became the oldest player ever to win a CS Major. I just say, all of Meister, I love you. And second, God help me, and I won measure. And while it's easy enough to say just ignore it, some of the best teams in esports are employing a different strategy. Hiring staff like sports psychologists to keep their players' heads in the game instead of on Reddit. Players need to have a well being to be able to perform at their best levels. I, for one, am shocked when I learn a team doesn't have a sports and performance psychologist on staff. Because in order to compete at that highest level, you have to be consistent, operate as a team, practice hard, and have all of that happen all while avoiding burnout. So physical and mental wellness are clearly barriers to prolonged player careers. But what else is driving competitors onto the couch before they can even grow decent facial hair? Well, meta changes and game patches are definitely one of them. You know what the meta is, right? And so they change everything all the time, whether it's um, Overwatch, whether it's League of Legends, um, Fortnite, for that matter, it's not really an eSport, but still. <laughs> when it's a five-person um, team and the meta changes every 90, 120 days, it's like a whole new game. In traditional sports, being a veteran has a certain amount of value. It lets your experience transfer to younger players, developing their talent faster than they could on their own. Hi, I'm Doug Ladd. Two rules, man. Stay away from my fucking Percocets. And do you have any fucking Percocets, man? All right. But in the constantly shifting sea of meta changes, how much is experience really worth? Sure, some skills will always be valuable, like handling the pressure of playing under the lights. But how much of a player's career is relevant at any given moment in time? Maybe that's the reason that fighting games have seen some of the oldest event winners. The fundamentals of fighting games remain pretty consistent across not only a game's lifespan, but even between games. So when Sako wins a premier event at 39 years old, it kind of makes sense. All of his experience with fighting game fundamentals and knowledge of his opponents can be instantly translated into action. But as a player ages, their reflexes inevitably slow down. It's just a biological reality. So if your play style was all about those snap reactions, adapting into those later years might prove difficult. Now, how badly reflexes are affected depends on the individual, but there are plenty of studies that suggest exercises of various types can keep your reaction speed crisp. Video games have no value. Video games teach hand-eye coordination, which is why I now have cat-like reflexes. <laughs> 
Finally, a lot of players have realized that there are other opportunities out there after their careers have come to an end, some of which don't involve a brutal practice schedule. Whether it's a transition to coaching, commentating, or streaming, there are other options for beloved players that can keep them in the money and connected to esports in a meaningful way. Now, streaming can still be a grind, but at least it's your grind. You set the boundaries. Plus, if you're one of the best, you can make way more money than your days as a pro player. There are reports that you're making more than a half a million dollars a month. I believe much of that coming from Twitch. A lot of the income is definitely coming from the Amazon and like Twitch Prime subscribers. Uh, we also just hit 5 million subscribers on YouTube as well. And uh, Instagram just hit over a million followers and I'm almost there on Twitter. Take Shroud, for example. He is no stranger to competitive success in CSGO. But if success is measured in dollars or in name recognition, his streaming career has been the better move by far. Whenever I play a new game, they're like, hey, could you see yourself going pro? No, absolutely not. I could never see myself going pro again in anything. Pro in life, how about that? And Defran, the most popular stage one player in the Overwatch League in terms of jersey sales, retired early, opting for what he called the comfy streamer life. Easy stream, sleep till Coaching and analyst jobs also let former players pass on their knowledge and stay connected to the game they love. Sometimes that legacy makes things easier when communicating with their players. I mean, my favorite uh, would be Zonic. Yeah. yeah, he seems uh, very hyped and uh, supporting the team a lot and he has so much experience. Yeah. He must be a great coach. With so many barriers to a long career and so many other options out there, it's not surprising that players go hard and then burn out early. Organizational support that comes with having an increased staff and carefully managed training can probably help, but it remains to be seen whether that is the missing piece of the puzzle. Players still spend a lot of time playing and practicing, as much as 12 hours a day sometimes. But they also live healthier, more balanced lives. They're going to talk about time management, you're going to talk about physical fitness, you're going to be talking about eating right. Yep! Mm, they sure don't make hosts like they used to. Josh, now that, that was a real host. Remember Twitch emote videos? Those are some good times, man. Meme videos these days, they just don't have the same soul that they used to. Okay, Boomer. Oh, f Peak, you may not like it. <laughs> this is what a gamer looks like. This is what, this is peak e-gamer physical performance. <laughs> what all the e-girls want. What all the e-girls want. E-girls want one thing, and it's disgusting. And it's... 